Hello, today is May 17th, and in this video, we wanted to show you the differences in insect feeding damage and mollusk feeding damage on seedling corn. So come along with us as we survey this field for insect feeding. So this plant here has symptoms that are more typical of either cutworm or slugs. Cutworms will clip plants off. Slugs will kind of shred a plant. So when a slug is feeding, it can clip off individual leaves, but that is more typical of a cutworm feeding. So this plant here has signs that's more typical of slug feeding. It's not that bad. Uh, we've, we don't have a whole lot of injury on this flag leaf. We've got warm temperatures forecast. We've got sunny days, windy conditions. This plant will probably outgrow the, the little bit of slug feeding that's on here. Slug feeding is going to be window painting, irregular, ragged, streaking holes across the leaf blades. So this plant here has signs that is more reminiscent of black cutworm, dingy cutworm, or even early instar armyworm. We've got this row of circular holes. The worms are going to cause this circular hole type feeding injury because as that plant is coming out of the ground, these leaves are all coiled up. So a worm will hit it and then that kind of unfolds itself. This plant here has large holes in the leaf. This could be done from a couple of different critters. Slugs can do this, but also small true armyworm could do that. True armyworm tends to feed from the leaf margin inwards, and you'll also have kind of that row of holes in it like we spoke of earlier with the cutworm. Um, I, the reason I think this could be slugs is because some of these holes are in the very middle of the leaf, and we've got a couple of the smaller, more ragged holes that is more typical of slug. This plant here has some slug feeding on it, as you can see from these small ragged holes. But what I really wanted to point out on this plant, you see how above the hole there's this yellow streaking? Again, that can also be reminiscent of wireworm. If a wireworm feeds underground, it, it hits that leaf as it's attaching to the stem underground, and that'll result in a yellow streak as well. So this plant here has more serious slug feeding where it looks like we've shredded a lot more of the leaves here. This whorl ha is having a harder time pushing out. This is a plant to watch. If the field looked more like this plant here, then I'd say we're going backwards and we need to take remedial action now. Whereas this is one of the very few plants in this whole field that looks like this. So I think that we don't need to worry about as much, but this is something that you do need to watch out for, particularly in cool, wet conditions. This plant here has been cut by a cutworm. The leaves are just wilting, lying on the ground. This is where the plant was. There's a hole here that could have been either from an, uh, an earthworm or from a cutworm. Cutworms hide under the ground during the daytime. So I'm going to do some digging, looking for uh, the culprit. And here it is. This is black cutworm right here. Now we've dug up several of these in this particular field and a lot of them have been very sickly. This one looks fairly healthy. So you'll need to keep monitoring your stand to make sure that the injury is not getting worse before you trigger an insecticide application. This plant here is starting to wilt. This could either be an early season disease like Pythium. Uh, some species are favored by cool soils and others are favored by warm soils. It could also be a sign of wireworm, white grub, or seed corn maggot underground. So we're going to dig this one up and see what's going on on the root system. And look, right here, we've got a white grub. And the stem is completely severed. So this, this was most likely done by this white grub right here. So as we were walking along, this plant stuck out to me. It's got some slug feeding here on this leaf. But notice how this leaf is kind of this grayish green color. This is wilting, whereas this leaf is not. This is typical of wireworm and white grub as well. 
feeding underground. So we're going to dig this plant up and see if we find anybody home. Oh, and there's a white grub. Wireworms can do this too. For wireworms, you will often see either a, a whorl leaf that's wilting because of damage underground, or for wireworms, you might see like one side of a leaf blade with a bright yellow streak, whereas the rest of the leaf looks fine. And that's not going to be a uniform yellow streak like it would be for like say a nitrogen or a sulfur deficiency. Now this plant here drew my eye because of the, the severed leaf on the surface which is again reminiscent of cutworm. When I dug it up, I found this big hole right underground. Cutworms will sometimes do that. White grubs will do that too, but white grubs and wireworms tend to go a little bit lower towards the seed. As I was digging, I found our culprit. But this cutworm, I want to point out, is very sickly looking. It's not, it's not moving very much. It's not curling up very well or very tightly like it should. This field had an insecticide in the furrow, and this cutworm is probably also picking up a little bit of the either the BT trait in the corn or maybe a little bit of the neonic seed treatment. Most of the BT traits and the neonics are not that strong on cutworm, but the combination of the two plus the insecticide in the furrow is probably what's doing this guy in. So now this here area of the field could be reminiscent of cutworm, but this is most likely bird as well. We've got a plant here that's been pulled up and see it's been clipped clean off all the way down the row. This is more reminiscent of vertebrate damage and less so of insect damage. Along with the theme of vertebrate damage, we've got three plants here in a row that have been cut to the same level and deer hoof prints.